Is she gonna look at your site? Hmm? Is she gonna look at your site? Um, oh, I haven't talked to you. Just his arm this is why for you, like the difference between like you already have quads and stuff, but we gotta coordinate your glutes and your hamstrings. So when you work out with us today, we're gonna get a lot of that. So this is why I need him to start in here first, not like just right here because his hips are really jacked out of position. Um, down because you're not gonna go knee forward and get the compression there. You're still gonna be able to sit all the way down the pendulum squat to get that range of motion. But I want you pushing through the whole foot, not the forefoot. How's your knee gonna do with that, though? Uh, it should be. I feel like I said I think it would be better than the hack because last time I did hack it was like like, like just now. With what? what you, you, just, cool. you said that was hurting you too, though. I but, mean, I mean, no, but I'm saying the, the pendulum when, we, when I when I tried it, it wasn't it wasn't bothering me. Oh, I thought you said initially that that was worse. Well, when I've tried it in my other gym, it's different. Because with the platform. Yeah, the platform. Yeah. How, okay. How, how, how it's aimed at it. Okay. Yeah, and that one you can adjust. Yeah. Um, but I, we've both been finding that we just like that angle. That's up. Um, and he should be better. That's why I wanted to start him in here first because we're going to activate some things that were just shut off. Okay. So all right, we're going to pull those out, and then I'm going to show you the difference. But you can see how much the motor pattern is is all hip and quad. Okay. So that's why I'm like right now, your ability to jump and explode is going to be super high. Um, but your ability to extend and curl in full on sprinting is what's going to be lacking. Yeah. Which I have exactly what I feel when I try to sprint. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I, I don't feel like I have that power in my, my run. This is what's cool about this. Like, I don't have to see you move to know how your body's operating because this tells me I can just know where you're going to be strong and where you're going to be weak. All right. So that's what I'm saying. You're already going to be good. I'm not too bad. I don't need you doing more jumps. I need you in more sprint patterns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, same thing. I already told you, you got that awkward, weird power athleticism. <laughs> yeah. Flexibility. Here. I mean, you tell me, is this... No, no, leave it. No, I'll back down. You tell me, is this okay? That is actually fucking me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you really just jump right now. <laughs> I mean, that's hey. what I'm saying, is he's going to have... He's got super strong everything, and so he's got all the power. Same kind of thing. If we want to turn an athlete... Obviously, I don't need them strong. I don't have any of the coordination. Yeah, we just need to coordinate the movements. Yeah. Arch the back up. Leg up. Now, watch. You have better range of motion. See that? Yeah. And that's why I don't stretch anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and now resist. And now you can resist. Okay, same thing here. So, hold. Yep, resist. Good. So when someone doesn't have a range of motion, I don't stretch them. I wouldn't find out why is the brain trying to guard them, but why is it keeping the muscles tight? So stretching creates a symptom. We want to get to the root cause. Mm. We've done this and you've been Oh, you're about to do the search and destroy? Yeah. <sighs> boo boo. Huh. But grab it. Here we go. Pull the shorts up as high as you can. All right. Here we go. So you'll notice the knee is not the issue. I'm going to go on your knee here. See, you can feel that. That's not that big of a deal. <laughs> it's not deal. Bad, just, It's just a reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've never felt that before. But notice the knee's not the issue. Now we're going to get to the issues. Whoa, whoa, my foot, my toes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> now, this, this, this is also a good indication for me of how much breath work and how much mental focus you've done in terms of coordinating stress. So whenever you encounter a stress, your body wants to go into protective mode, which is going to cause tension, and it's going to cause muscles to shorten, okay? Not a very good situation for athleticism or force absorption. 
So when part of this, it's kind of like when you, have, if someone wants to take a cold shower, not for physical properties, but to control their mind and their emotions, what did, when people first start in a cold shower, they, they go, <gasps> right? Yeah. If you know it's there, breathe, relax, okay? You're not being shot, it's just a different sensation. So, same thing, breathe and relax. Here we go. Good, it's a sensation, but that's all it is. It's a strong sensation. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to get to some muscles too like that right there that's kind of normal you still feel it but it's that would be like if you had an intensity that'd be like a three i want everything to be a three these spots that i touch that you're like seven eight nine ten those are problems and we got to eliminate those So now I know you, now I know your major spots, but now I'm gonna go back to the A B C D. Okay, your worst spots basically are gonna be your ankle and what we hit up there. Now that one might be more of a just a big muscle contraction. So again, they're gonna feel different. But tell me which one again is most intense. Another way to think about it is, is if I if I told you I'm gonna keep touching it over and over and over to the point where you want to punch me. One that you say you want to punch me the fastest, that's the one I want to treat. Okay, all right. Here we go. So differentiate between A, that's A. versus B. They're both bad. Okay. Now, one's a nine, one's a ten. So this is where you have to... Yeah. Okay, one the things, second one was a ten. Yes, one's a ten, yeah. one's a nine. Okay, very good. And then tell me if this one is worse than that. <sighs> it's like it's not, but it's just... It's a big it's a contraction. contraction. Exactly. So it is a spot, but it's not uh, yeah. like that's the one that you're like, oh, that one's definitely it. Yeah. Okay, very good. That's the start. Go ahead and sit up for me. Again, if it makes sense, most people are like, how are you going to work on my knee or your back when I'm working on your ankle? Well, when you're an athlete and you're running and jumping, what's the first place you have to absorb force? Exactly. So when I explain it that way. Little ankle flex thing. Well, but here's the thing. Now we're going to find out what, think of the first search as like finding a proverbial tack in the shoe. Like let's say you've been training, you're super strong, and if I wanna go out there and throw the cameras, beat you in a squat, I'm not gonna out squat you, but what I can do is put a sharp tack in your shoe. You go to squat, you feel that tack, your brain goes out, and guess what, you collapse down. And then I just go in there and I squat my normal weight, and now I'm stronger. Am I actually stronger? No, it's because you encountered a stimulus that your brain says, I don't like that. So what's it gonna do? It's gonna shut off your muscles and you can no longer absorb force. And everyone looks at you and like, I guess he's not as strong as he thought. Had nothing to do with strength. Had everything to do with the signal. So the first search finds the signal. Now I'm gonna do a secondary search to find out which muscles get shut off because of the signal. And that's what we have to get activated and, and rewire that system for you to be able to absorb force. Okay? You put on his hand if you want. I know, I was getting in up close. Get up close. <laughs> I was getting the good stuff. So here's how this works. Notice when I hit this spot, you didn't feel your ankle, you felt your calf, because it's the calf and all the muscles in this whole compartment that support the ankle. So that's why too, you just working on direct ankle strength um, doesn't help if your hips and your glutes don't fire because ankle stability doesn't start with the ankle, it starts with your glutes, okay? All right, so lay back down. We're gonna do one more search. Now, what basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search the whole leg again, but whatever spot that I hit that actually turns the calf back on the most, that's the thing that I know is completing that neurological loop. Let's turn that power down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually turning you more like an athlete. Though. Is it doing something? The calf. Okay, so there was one. There was one. So I'm going to do my ABCD now that I have kind of the overview. So we had that one. Yeah, there. that's a strong one. Yep, that's, that's one. Very strong. That's two. That's three. That's a three. And then it's a B. Oh, I mean, that the second time you held it longer. Yeah. But so out of those four, which one's the worst? Okay. There 
go. So stand up for me. I'm gonna do one more little thing. Might not be exact. So we know the area. So basically what's happened is, so what I'm seeing um, is that when you are applying force into that ankle, your, um, uh, it's really the, um, bad muscle back there. Yeah, that muscle that starts from the eye that I'm spacing on uh, is not stabilizing. Uh, so your low back, you had any low back issues? Uh, I did, I did pull a little bit of deadlift in. I left a long time ago. But, but, so, but this is why your hips are shut off. But yeah, as you can see now, I think, I think it's, I mean, I sit a lot, like, like a long time too. Okay, so that's also why that adductor is a secondary, because it's actually not your adductor, it's the insertion of the psoas. Okay. okay. Six hour streams, yeah. daily. This is why, like, if we were to have you do even regular squats where we're loading your spine, you wouldn't be stabilizing ideally, and therefore, again, the brain's going to shut the back down. Which then means, at the end of the day, we're just not getting maximum production, but also, at worst, you're susceptible to injury, which obviously we want to prevent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get you, go ahead and have a seat on the chair. Okay, so we're going to do just a basic squat pattern to sit seated. All right, so you're gonna sit on the front edge of the chair because we, when we sit, I don't want you back in the chair for something like this. So if you're going to sit, sit on your sit bones. Now we're gonna sit at right angles. So feet straight, feet shoulder width apart. Bring your feet in slightly. Yep, good. Now feet out in front. See how you keep wanting to go to here? Because again, you got strong quads. So when I bring my feet in here, I can push from the quad. Feet out here, the only way to stand up is to pull from the hamstring and to drive my hips. That's what we're going to work on, which is why, again, out here, I want you in less quad dominant positions and a little more glute dominant positions. When you go to sit, again, we don't drive the knees forward, hip hinge, hamstrings, pull down. That's crazy. I thought I was opposite. I thought I was more like knees, hamstring dominant, like straight going to squat. It's not what I'm seeing right at the moment. But that's also why, again, you start to feel your knees when your quads want to stay tight. So when you land, the knee has to bend. The knees bending, the quad has to lengthen, right? If, the, if now when you land, you resist the ground, right, to try to push away, quad tightens, where's it gonna pull? Knee and hip, that's where we get our knee, hip, and back pain. Mm. Okay, so, and <laughs> today, I land, in the, it hurts the most. Yeah, in the second, um, or when we get back to the other session, we're in, today we're gonna do a lot of hamstring work, so we'll actually see how strong your hamstrings are relative to your body weight, okay? All right, so this position here, um, now you're in good right angle position, now, we want to be active. Again, we never want to be passive. So we're going to uh, sit up tall, engage your glutes, so squeeze your butt, and now pull back into the floor isometrically. So now we got hamstrings. Here's the thing. You see how your quads want to start to turn on? Right? we got no weight on your quads right now. So if you're actually turning on the hamstring, the quads should turn off. This, when people say, oh, quad dominant, you know, and they ask them, what does that really mean? They don't know. Oh, my quad is strong. No, how are you even testing that? Because one, you, there's no really true isolation of any muscle, right? <clears throat> so this is the better example I give people when I talk about quad dominance is a neurological pattern. So when I put you in a position which shouldn't be any quad because we're doing a leg curl, then the hamstring should turn on and the opposite muscles should turn off. However, if I do a hamstring curl and my quad still wants to turn on, that's a co-contraction, so that's bad news. Mm -hmm. So your first homework assignment is when you're sitting, you get to practice this. I want you to get to the point where you can just very rapidly fire and go, glute hamstring, glute hamstring, glute hamstring, and your quads stay relaxed, okay? Once you get that feeling of, oh, that's how I turn on my glutes and my hamstring, Stop. yep. So again, you, it's kind of like riding a bike. You kind of have to get that first aha moment. So just start off slow. Once you get the feeling of, oh, there's my glutes, there's my hamstrings, my quads are relaxed, I want you to be able to get a maximal contraction and hold that for five minutes straight without letting go and without your quads turning off. That's your first homework of science. Yep. <laughs> okay, I can tell you, like, I've sat on plane rides for an hour and a half and kept it the entire time. What? Yeah, just breathing. You just thought about that? 
It's like I'm swinging my knees. Yeah, loosen <laughs> hamstrings. Just keep them engaged the entire time. What's cool is, is when you do that, I'll do that when I'm not just exhausted trying to catch up on sleep. But when I do that, you get up and all of a sudden you're like, I feel good. Things are working. Everyone else is like, oh, when they get up out of a plane. Okay, so that is sitting correctly. Now, to stand, first thing we're going to do is actually teach you how, with the glutes engaged, now I can actually use my hips. Most people will do the old man rock, right? You ever watch old guys get up, they rock, and they do this, and they brace because they have no butts anymore. Right? Oh. So we're going to, yep, so we're going to go glute hamstring when we're sitting, lift the hip, drive into the floor. Now, see how you went like this, knees came forward and then up? Again, that's you getting back in your quads. I want you to think, like, I can have my feet out in front of my knees and still stand up if I pull. Mm. Okay, so I want you to get in that habit of pulling yourself up. And the moment your butt comes out of the chair, hip extension, hip extension. Yeah, exactly. So that's why this whole time we're going to keep a vertical shin. If your knees come forward and that shin angle starts to switch to here, now we're back into quads. Okay, so butt tight lift, hips, even more. Okay, and then when you go to sit, again, hip hinge, and then rapidly use your hamstrings to whoop, pull down to the chair, because that is landing. Landing is faster pulling, not resisting gravity, okay? All right, so this is just proper 101 movements. That was better, now hips back, and pull. So snap it like there's a magnet between your butt and the chair. Back. Yep, and pull, that's it. So what, here we go. <laughs> Doing this? Oh, I need to be smart side. Oh, great. I almost cried. Butt <laughs> tight, hip stomp, and drive up. Good. Hips back, pull down. Very good. Now keep your breathing. Getting out through your nose, not your mouth. No mouth breathing. There's a time and a place. <laughs> Sit forward. Same. Good. Now be tense. Again, I can talk to you and I can move rapidly, right? Because the muscles can do the job and I don't have to tense. Snap up, hold, snap down, hold. Snap up, hold, stop, and then reverse back, snap down, hold. Good, so there's a pause in between. Not rebound. What? How'd that feel? Uh, <laughs> just to feel the difference in how your body's functioning. All I did was squat in the chair <laughs> for 10 minutes. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Try to. Try to. That's all I have to do. Oh, yeah, you get a bank or 
Session one done for right now. Uh, we're at the, actually about to go get something to eat, and then we got to come back. We'll be doing some athletic training, performance stuff, uh, and I'll be filming that as well. But that session right there, yeah, I feel light. I feel super light though. That felt it, it was tough, but it felt good. It's like the stuff I, I like to feel outside of just lifting heavy. So let's go get some food. Wow. 